Hello and welcome to Inside Home Brewing. I'm Jay Thomas. And this is a slightly overcarbonated Keller beer. I brewed up uh, specifically for the uh, NHC, the National Homebrew Competition. I'm not holding my breath on uh, getting any medals on this one, but uh, it's pretty good. I enjoy it. So, uh, anyway, I should rename this uh, to, uh, instead of instead of Inside Home Brewing, it should be Brewing with Spike. I bought a new Spike Solo 15-gallon all-in-one brewing system, and I got that hooked up in the garage. So that came a little over a month ago, but I'm finally getting around to uh, got everything dialed in now. What happened was uh, the PID on the controlling unit was no good. I worked with the people at Spike, uh, at Spike Brewing, Excellent customer service, highly recommended to buy their product. So far, I like it a lot. Like I said, the customer service was excellent. The PID controller was was uh, out of whack, and I could not get it to work correctly through the help of the uh, customer service, and they referred me to the people over at uh, Electric Brewing Supply. That's the, their, apparently that's their supplier for the uh, PID control unit on it, but uh, Working with somebody over there, I also couldn't get it to, to programmed correctly. So they finally just sent me another one, put it in, replaced it, put it in, and uh, works perfectly. I uh, got it all hooked up. It's uh, ready to rock right now. And we're going to get brewing on this uh, brand new system out in the garage. So uh, anyway, what we're going to brew, I've never, i got to relearn how to brew beer. So uh, i never done brewing a bag type of uh type of a thing, especially with an all-in-one system. But uh, anyway, I have nine pounds of Red X malt, one half pound of German rye, and one half pound of uh, Cara Munich type one. I just want to get rid of some st some of this uh, grain because uh, what happened was a while back I was going to brew up a Roggen beer with, uh, with half rye and half uh, Red X, but uh, I, put in the, <laughs> I put the rye malt into a bucket and then I added what I thought was Red X but it turned out to be five pounds of a uh, Kara Munich. So that's not gonna work. So I just set that aside, regrouped, started over. There's a homebrew mishap. But, uh, and then I just mixed all that together and I'm just slowly getting rid of it in all these uh, different batches. So it's uh, nine pounds of Red X, German rye, about a half pound, and about a half pound of the Wireman Kara Munich one. Oh, uh, one ounce. Hallertau Blanc hops. I wanted to get rid of the last of uh, some Hallertau Blanc that I had. And uh, two ounces of Yakima Valley Pearl hops. So those are going to be a full 60 minute boil. I got uh, also at the end in the uh, Whirlpool, we're going to do another two ounces of the, uh, of the uh, Pearl hops. So what I'm going to do is a Hotchkrus, Hotchkrus, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Hotchkurs. It uh, means high and short in German, but uh, it's going to be a, not a, it's going to be a, you know, it's a single, being a brew in a bag, you use all the volume at once, but I'm going to, it's just a step, a step mash. So we're going to dough in and uh, stabilize the temperature for 145 degrees for 30 minutes. Then I'm going to raise the temperature to 160 degrees for 45 minutes. And go from there. The uh, yeast I'm using is going to be the uh, Imperial Yeast L13 Global. And just going to ferment that at uh, 50 degrees for as long as it takes. And go through the whole system. Or through the whole process of uh, lagering my beer. Anyway, let's get out there and uh, I'll show you what I got. Well, that Keller beer is real good. So here's the uh, setup. What I got is, uh, like I said, it's an all-in-one system. So the uh, basket has a false bottom on it. Pump. It's going to keep everything recirculating through the, out the bottom, through the pump, into the top. And uh, I added a uh, SS Brew Tech. The, uh, the recirculation manifold. So that's going to go, it'll plug on in here and this will sit on top of the uh, grain bag. I also have a brew bag. I use the brew bag. 
I made up a little uh, copper ring to hold it in place. Just a, we'll hold that bag open on the bottom and somewhat in place. And just set that inside there. So I'm then just going to, uh, I haven't really thought this out yet, but uh, get this spread out over the, that'll work. Oh yeah, that's going to work and I'll just get some, uh, Kind of stumble through this process here first time doing it so i'll get some uh twine to uh tie those in place so after uh thinking the process through first things first we're going to add the water because it's got the etchings on here so we need eight and a half gallons for this recipe we'll get that filled up and uh then put the uh, basket on and get that set up the way i want so there we go, eight and a half gallons. I'll get the, uh, the brew bag situated the way I think it's gonna work. <clears throat> I did not, uh, I liked using the brew bag before in my old system, so I just uh, kept that the same. I, I left the, uh, the mill on my, on my grain mill the same, so hopefully we'll come up with uh, a pretty decent uh, efficiency. I have no idea what it's gonna be. I was getting, it was usually 78 to 80% efficiency. So we'll see how this works. It, it's probably gonna be a lot less. I don't know how much less, but uh, it's all new to me and I get to relearn how to brew beer. So we'll uh, get this basket in here and get that tied down and uh, fire this bad boy up and see what we can do. So now that's all ready to go. Um, I did have to do a little modification. I forgot about the, uh, the uh, return for the uh, circulation. Anyway, now we just follow the directions. Okay, heat, strike water. During this process, you'll heat all the water that is needed to add your crushed grain, which will make your mash. Since this is a single vessel, no sparge system, you, no sparge system you'll add all your volume of strike water up to your kettle during this step. Fill up the entire volume as prescribed by your recipe. Use the etched volume markers on the side. We did that. After filling the kettle with the correct amount of strike water, place a basket on top of the kettle. Did that. Use the one hose from the outlet valve to the pump. Connect the pump to the, in the uh, inlet port on the basket. Open the, val open the drain valve. The pump valve in your basket, set the controller to the desired mash temperature, and turn the element on. Okay, here we go. So, first things first, open the, uh, the valve here, open the valve on the uh, pump, and that goes here. Okay, water flows through, all is well. Okay, so far so good. Now, here's where the tricky part came when it uh, was malfunctioning on me. So turn the power on. It's gonna go through its little cycle. And it should end up 10 degrees Celsius. 71 degree, or, uh, and it's, the SV is at 71. No, I don't want that. But anyway, I don't know what Celsius is. I did not want to mess with this controller as it was set in Celsius. So I'm going to live with the uh, Celsius reading and go from there. So we want 10 degrees Celsius. That's at, uh, shows at 10 degrees Celsius. So that's all good. So 147 degrees. Ba, ba, ba. I do not know what 140 or 100, 149. I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe later I will get around, be brave enough to uh, try to 
switch that from Celsius to uh, Fahrenheit, but for now, we're rolling with it like this. We're going to go metric. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do a math conversion and see what the temperature I need. So I want it at 149. I'm going to add the grain at 100, when it's at 149 degrees. It'll probably drop a few degrees. Then I'll lower the temperature and get it recirculating at 145 degrees. And then for uh, 30 minutes, then we're going to bump up the temperature. That should be straightforward and easy to a 160 degrees for 45 minutes. So anyway, I'll do a little, uh, get my phone out and uh, see what temperature I need to set this at. So the uh, temperature has been stabilized now for a few minutes at uh, 65 degrees. So we're ready to dough in. And uh, the problem with the last one, it would uh, be set at a certain temperature, but then it, it wouldn't stop heating up. The element just kept, it stayed on and just kept heating up and we could not get that fixed, but with the new uh, PID unit, everything is perfect so far, except for the uh, little hiccup, and I don't dare try to uh, reprogram it for uh, <laughs> quite yet, from uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Anyway, it's time to uh, get dough, do the uh, dough-in process now. So like I said, I left the uh, mill on my grain, or on my, uh, I left the, uh, the gap on the, the grain mill the same. It's I like it pretty ground up. It was working rather well in my old system, which was just a uh, igloo cooler as a mash tun with a uh, the brew bag. So we'll get this uh, poured in there and uh, stir it up. Make sure there's no dough balls. Stabilize the temperature and go from there. Get that all stirred in, make sure there's no clumps. There's a lot of uh, wort underneath there, underneath the basket. So get that stirred in. It went down to 64 degrees. Only dropped one degree. And then, uh, So we're gonna change this to a 62 degrees, or 60, 63 degrees. We gotta change this to 60, 63 degrees. That'll be, that's actually 63 degrees is right close to 145, just over 145 degrees. So we got that recirculating. It's all mixed in. Seems very good. And now, I don't know whether it's worth it or not, but uh, I'm gonna add the, uh, the mash manifold. So I shut off the pump, added the mash manifold. So I'll just set that back down. It's sitting on top of the grain now. So I'll turn the pump back on. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. I'm glad it isn't bubbling the whole time. Uh, you know they say they say hot side aeration is uh, is a myth in the home brewing, but uh, I don't know. I don't like it. There's a reason for uh, people doing low dough, low dissolved oxygen. So, uh, but no, there's no bubbles now. You can see it's circulating throughout. Let's pull this up and see what it looks like. Very cool. So we'll just set that back down. Put the lid back on. And set the timer. We're going, going uh, 30 minutes at this temperature. Then I'm going to bump up the temperature to uh, 160 degrees. I don't know what that is in, uh, <laughs> in uh, Celsius, but uh, I'll do a little conversion of, off my phone and go from there. All right, so uh, first problem encountered is the, uh, the flow rate. I have the uh, temperature established. I just turned on the, uh, the timer for 30 minutes. 
the flow rate, <laughs> geez. So what was happening, the pump was drawing more liquid than would drop through there. So I had a, it was filled up too high and the bottom, I would imagine underneath the, uh, the basket was dry or about dry because it was, uh, it started sucking air out of there. So uh, I had to uh, regroup and uh, now I got the, uh, the flow seems to be better. It's at six, it's been bouncing between 64, 63 degrees. So that's all good. So anyway, using this, using the, uh, the, uh, brew ba or, uh, the brew bag, I believe is restricting the flow. So something to work through and uh, figure out and see now it dropped down to 63 degrees. So everything is good so far. Now one little hiccup, but uh, I turned the, uh, the volume of the flow through the, uh, through the, um, the uh, manifold way down. So uh, hopefully this will work and uh, we'll go from there. And I like the color. That red X is a red beer. Kind of hard to tell, but uh, that mash is looking kind of red. So anyway, we're going to uh, continue like this and watch it to make sure that it doesn't fill up too much, which would mean below the basket is uh, it's got a dead, it's got a big gap in there. So uh, anyway, I don't know. We're brewing beer. So the alarm just went off. I uh, had it recirculating that uh, for quite a bit now. It's uh, I found the uh, sweet spot on uh, not letting the level drop too or uh, raise too much on top and drop too low below the uh, basket. Anyway, it, it seems perfect now. So now it's time to turn up the uh, temperature. We're going to go up to uh, 71 degrees, which is going to equal right around 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, 71. So then just uh, hit that, uh, go over, one up, seven. Oops. Seven, one, hit set, bam starting to heat up now it's uh, still recirculating once it establishes 71 degrees for a minute I'll uh, turn the uh, timer on again to uh, 45 minutes so the alarm just went off so now we're uh, on to uh, the next step draining water okay so that was going for uh, another 45 minutes at this temperature okay drain water purpose drain this step the grain in the basket and the sugary water that was created will be separated. The spent grain can be used for baking dog treats, fertilizer, etc. while the word is boiled. Turn off the element, turn the element and pump off, okay? Element, pump off. Lift the basket out of the kettle carefully. Rest the basket on top of your kettle with both hooks secure under the top of the on the top of the lip of the kettle. We recommend having two people lift the basket and placing that on the kettle. For safety concerns, I have a uh, hoist. Okay. Pro tip says, with the basket raised out of the wort and hanging from the basket hooks, the pump can be turned back on at about one quarter flow. This is called the Vorloff, and to help, and will help with wort clarity. The grain acts as a filter and recirculating the wort back in the kettle through the grain will allow the clear liquid to flow through while the liquids are trapped in the grain bed. We recommend doing a Vorloff for 10 minutes. <clears throat> Let the basket hang on the kettle until it stops dripping work. This should take about five to 10 minutes. However, while the basket is draining, you can proceed to step four and turn on the element. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, what I used to do, I should say, is uh, in, my, in my igloo cooler, I would drain all the work. Once it was done, I'd drain all the work into the boil kettle. Take the uh, sparge water, put that into the, uh, on top of the, uh, the grains in the, in the uh, 
in the uh, cooler and then drain that. Done deal, I get 78 to 80% efficiency. We'll see what happens here. So now, this is unknown territory. We're gonna lift the basket up out of there and uh, just follow the directions. All right, so this may work or it may be a disaster. I hooked up the uh, pulley to all four straps on the uh, brew bag. I have the kettle, a rope between the two. It's hooked on with these things. And uh, now I'm gonna lift that up. I wanna lift the kettle and not let go of the brew basket. Okay, here we go. So there we go. This release doesn't seem to work very well, but... So the bag is loose. The bag is loose. Somewhat loose. The, uh, I'll have to hook that back up. It's draining into the kettle. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I'll get this hooked back up. To uh, recirculate. So now it seems that the uh, basket is held up and in secure it's got these hooks back here that hold it in place so that the basket is secure we can uh, lift the grain bag all by itself after I uh, follow the directions and let it recirculate so here we go we're gonna turn this on and uh, Turn the pump on and see what happens. Pump on. It's going through. I don't know about that hot side aeration that's happening. But uh, let's try this. We'll remove the uh, Now the bag is off the bottom. The bag is off the bottom of the uh, the false bottom. It's flowing through. It's oxygen. <laughs> it's oxygenating the beer. Yeah, oh boy. So uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how this beer turns out. S stay tuned. So for the uh, Verloff, I decided I didn't want it uh, to be getting any HSA, hot side aeration. So I just uh, put the basket back in place. I have the bag just at the, at the uh, wort line. It's not splashing anymore. It is recirculating and not splashing. That makes me feel better. We're gonna let that circulate for a little while and then lift that basket out, let it totally drain and go from there. So here's how this is all set up. It's a nice, uh, nice uh, little hoist from uh, the brew bag people. The brew bag. <laughs> anyway, they're not paying me, but uh, I do like their products. So that's been uh, recirculating now for about 10 minutes. I'll just shut the pump off and uh, lift this bag up a little bit more. So that it can properly drain. I think
think the uh, direction said uh, five or ten minutes to uh, drain it all up. Let's see what it says here. Let the basket hang on the kettle until it stops dripping work. This should take about five to ten minutes. Okay. We just let it do its thing for five to ten minutes. I can uh, pull this apart, get that all out of there, and uh, we'll be ready to go. So everything worked out perfectly so far. Well, kind of perfectly. We've lost, I don't know if you can see that, they've lost one gallon of a wort due to a grain absorption. We're at seven and a half gallons. So now what I'm going to do is just take a, uh, pull out a sample for uh, the pre-boil gravity. I'm going to set that and uh, set that aside and uh, let it cool off so I can take a hydrometer reading on it. So now, seven and a half gallons. That's probably going to work out pretty good. So, I've never brewed using hot pellets without putting them in a hot bag. Baby steps. So, I should, I could be able to put them in there. Going to whirlpool. We're not going to get a lot of the hot debris into the firm, or to the uh, into the fermenter. But anyway, my idea is to take the uh, basket. So if I took if I took the uh, hops in a bag, put them in here, it'd probably burn a hole through the bag as it hits the uh, heating element. So what I'm going to do, it may or may not work. We're going to put this inside. Bring it to a boil and I can put the hop pellets in the bag in here It'll stay away from the heating element because it's got the, it's got the uh, false bottom on it. So theoretically that should work. We have plenty of volume. Yeah. Plenty of volume to keep the uh, hops up out of the, out of the way of the uh, heating element. So here we go. So the next step says boil. Purpose. During this step, the wort is boiled. This will evaporate all flavors and concentrate the wort. Close the valves. Okay. Valves are closed. All the valves are closed. Disconnect the orange hose from the basket. Yeah. And put attach it to the second port. Okay. We got it attached the way it should be. Change over to manual. Okay. Set the can. Okay. Set your control to manual mode. Set the output to 100% and turn uh, the element on. To change over to manual, press the set button until you see the AMRS auto on screen. Next, press the up button and you'll see our AMRS manual on the screen. Wait two seconds and the PID will lock into manual mode. The controller in the manual mode will let you precisely adjust the output to get a good rolling boil. After the basket is done dripping, remove it from the kettle. Done that. Allow the element to bring the work to a boil. Once at boil, the controller can be dialed back so a steady rolling boil is achieved. Pro tip, when the wort is about to reach boiling, an issue called hot break will occur. The wort can begin to rise and boil over the top of the kettle. <laughs> Been there, done that. Okay. To change to manual mode, press set button. You'll see arms auto. Okay, press set button. Arms auto. Okay, bam. Manual. at 70% manual okay go to 100% okay it's at 100% turn the element on I can hear it turned on 
Okay. It's at 57 degrees. 100 percent we're gonna see what the boil is like and we can turn down apparently we would be able to turn that down to just achieve a good rolling boil so this just started boiling we're gonna to try to uh, turn this the uh, turn it down a little bit got it all fogged up but we'll try to uh, turn that down a little bit to uh, to have a less of a vigorous boil. 60, we'll go 70. So 70% boil. Okay, we're at 70% boil, manual. Now, the whole idea of uh, brewing out in the garage so I want to be able to brew any time of year in the garage. And th like right now, it's the last day of February. It's about 38 degrees out. I don't want to leave the garage door open like I would if I was uh, using propane. You have to leave the garage door open to, but uh, just so, so you don't get fumigated. Anyway, so this electric system, but uh, the problem with that is the steam inside the garage. I don't want it to uh, be damaging the uh, the drywall or anything it's a finished it's all finished up with drywall and stuff so uh, I don't want to do any damage to that so I do have the uh, the uh, steam condenser lid I'll get that on there and fire it up here in a minute and see how that works so now I have the uh, steam condenser lid on top of the uh, on top of the uh, basket. I don't know how this is going to work, but uh, I haven't turned it on yet. So now we'll just, uh, it's boiling away nicely. I throw in the first addition of hops inside the basket. I don't have to worry about the, uh, the hop bag getting burnt open because it's not going to touch the, uh, the heating element. So now I turn on the auxiliary. So what happens with the steam condenser lid, it sucks water out of this five gallon bucket with a submerged pump, comes up through here, and it blows a mist of, uh, of water through here. The steam comes up through here, it blows a mist of cold water, collects all that, and it runs down into here. Instead of blowing out a whole bunch of steam all over the garage, it's all collecting warm water into this bucket. So then after a while, I'm gonna have to change that out. I can reuse this water for cleaning or whatever. And then I'll just fill that back up again once that one is, is empty. So, so far so good. I'll check on it and make sure it's boiling correctly still at, uh, it says it's 91 degrees, <coughs> excuse me, at 70% uh, power. I may even turn it down a little bit. So I just uh, switched out the water on the uh, steam condenser. That's doing what it should. It went through five gallons and uh, what it's doing is just collecting the uh, steam and puts it into another bucket. So that's working perfectly. I turned down the, uh, the percentage of heat on the element to, uh, oh yeah, to uh, 40%. It's got a nice rolling boil inside of there. Everything is perfect. In the meantime, I checked out the uh, pre-boil gravity on that sample I took earlier after it cooled off. And it, I based this recipe on 78% uh, efficiency. It should have been a, uh, 7.19 gallons of wort at a uh, gra a rid at a uh, pre-boil gravity of 1.044. We ended up having 7.5 gallons of uh, pre-boil wort at uh, a gravity of 1.040. So we got a we got a decent gravity. So so far everything is real good, and uh, we'll just continue from there and uh, 
after we're, it's all said and done, we'll see what the numbers are and uh, see how efficient this new system is. So now on uh, to the next step, Whirlpool. During this step, the wort will be run into the pump and back into the kettle at an angle. This will create the wort to spin inside the kettle. This spinning will cause the sediment, like grain hops and proteins, to collect at the bottom center of the kettle. This allows for the clear wort to transfer into your fermenter. Turn off the element, done. Open the valve, open the outlet valve on the kettle, the valve on the pump and the second valve on the kettle, turn the pump on. We recommend whirlpooling for 10 to 15 minutes, turn the pump off and close all the valves after that. Okay, so uh, I have a whirlpool addition of hops. I'd like them to be at 180 degrees, which is what, 81? Which I think is 81 degrees. Let me look. 82 degrees. So once it gets down to 80, I'm going to whirlpool it now, get it to 82 degrees Celsius, which would equal a about 180 degrees, and then I'm going to add the uh, the last of the hops and keep whirlpooling it for about 10 minutes, and uh, then I'm just going to go through the work chiller. My work chiller is uh, 30 pounds of ice through a copper coil that's encased in a copper frame, so the the coils don't get smashed or anything, and then it runs. It's going to run from the boil kettle into the uh, wort chiller very, very slowly through and out at about eh, 50 degrees. When I did a test run with this system, it came out at 40 pounds, came out at 40 pounds of ice, topped off with water, came out at uh, 46 degrees. This time I'm using 30 pounds of ice, topped off with water, so we'll see what it uh ends up being as the uh, final temperature so we'll go from there and uh, new brew new system everything's new I'm relearning how to brew beer so I have it whirlpooling now it's cooled off a little more than uh, than uh, projected we're at 72 degrees but the volume is way more than what I thought we're at uh, about six point, hmm, just under 6.5, 6.4, 6.35 gallons of a wort. Probably because I haven't never used a uh, steam condenser before. So uh, anyway, we're going to have a, a bigger batch of beer than expected, which is okay. But now, as that's whirlpooling, I'll throw in this uh, hot bag. Let it do its thing. Just put the lid on and uh, I'm gonna let that roll for about 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna go and uh, go ahead and cool it off and put it into the fermenter. So far, I like it. And uh, yeah, killer beer. So I've had that running through the uh, Whirlpool now for uh, at least 10 minutes. So shut off the pump. So now what's going to happen is it's going to run through here, through the pump, and through the uh, work chiller at a very, very slow rate to uh, cool off the beer, or uh, cool off the work. And uh, as it goes into the fermenter. And then uh, turn back the pump. I want this almost closed. It's cold coming out of there, so it's fine to drop. I won't, I won't have to worry about the hot side aeration. 
This helps it get uh, oxygenated. And I do have an oxygen tank and I will give it a good blast of oxygen. So I do not know. I do not know how well this is going to work. But uh, it seems to be flowing nice and slow like it was with a gravity feed on my old system. So we'll try this out. We'll test out the, uh, the temperature once it's all done and uh, take a gravity reading, see where we're at as far as efficiency goes. So uh, doing a temperature check, all the uh, wort is in the, in the thing, in the uh, fermenter. It's at 49 degrees, it's perfect. I want it to uh, ferment at 50 degrees. I have the yeast in there already. And uh, running a, a uh, check on the brewer's friend, it looks like we're at 82% efficiency so far. I'm gonna get this put away, clean everything up, and uh, we'll uh, see what's going on tomorrow. So it's the uh, next day, I have the beers in the uh, ferment chamber. It's uh, doing its thing. I checked on Brewer's Friend, the, the uh, brew house efficiency is 82%, that's real good. I'm happy with those results. I think the key to that was uh, using the brew bag on top of the false bottom. Once I figured out the flow rate, that was my hiccup. Once I figured out the flow rate, so it doesn't suck more wort than what can flow through the bag, worked out perfect. So I'm real happy with the results, 82% is fantastic. So I did end up with a little more volume. I think the extra volume, you know, compared to my recipe, and uh, I think the extra volume was due to the fact that I used the uh, steam condenser lid. Perhaps, I don't know. I won't be able to find out until it's summer when I can leave the uh, garage door open and, uh, and just let the steam do its thing. Maybe there's a difference between a steam condenser lid on and a steam condenser lid off. I don't know yet. But uh, so far, I'm real happy with the results. Next time, I'm going to uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Next time, I'm going to be uh, checking out the whirlpool action instead of putting the hops into the bag and on top of the false bottom to keep them from burning on the element. I'm going to just throw them in commando and uh, see how well the uh, whirlpool action works because I don't really want those uh, clogging up the inside of my work chiller. I don't want a whole lot of it into the uh, into the fermenter, though most of that's gonna drop out anyhow, but uh, we'll check out the uh, Whirlpool action next time. So uh, remember, brew what you like, like what you brew. We'll see you next time, Inside Home Brewing, or Brewing with Spike. 044 original, or 1.0, that's good, but good, good, but good. Here we go, been drinking too much. Take 18. Yeah. Killer beer.